Ever looked at the little map in front of you on a flight and noticed that number hovering around 35,000 feet? Maybe you wondered, why there? Why not higher or lower? It's not random. The number is the result of decades of experimentation, calculations, and hard-earned aviation wisdom. Every single commercial flight you take is planned around it. From fuel efficiency to passenger comfort, turbulence avoidance, and the limits of jet engines themselves. Today, we're lifting the curtain on the secret of 35,000 feet, the science, engineering, and economics that make modern air travel possible. By the end of this video, you'll never look at your flight map the same way again. If you love learning about the hidden science behind everyday things, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. This is just the start of uncovering the secrets above our heads. The primary reason commercial planes cruise around 35,000 feet is one word airlines care about more than anything else, efficiency. Operating a jet is insanely expensive. Fuel is by far the biggest cost. Planes burn thousands of gallons per hour and even small savings matter. Every design decision, every flight plan is about squeezing as much performance as possible from every drop of fuel. That brings us to a fundamental concept in aerodynamics, drag. Drag is simply the air resistance that fights against the airplane's motion. Think about running a race through water. Exhausting, right? Now imagine running on solid ground. That's the difference between flying low and high. Near the ground, the air is dense and thick, filled with molecules that resist motion. Every second, the engines are pushing against that invisible wall. As the plane climbs, the air thins, molecules become fewer, and drag drops dramatically. By 35,000 feet, there's far less air resistance. Less drag means engines don't have to work as hard, which translates directly into fuel savings. Flying lower would be like swimming through molasses, energy intensive and costly. But efficiency isn't the only factor. At this altitude, pilots hit a sweet spot where fuel consumption, speed, and engine performance are all optimized. Airlines carefully calculated. A few thousand feet higher or lower can make a measurable difference over long flights. For long haul routes, Flying at 35,000 feet might save tens of thousands of dollars in fuel per flight. If you're already fascinated by how airlines squeeze efficiency from physics, drop a like. It helps us make more videos breaking down the secrets of aviation. If thin air is so great, why not just fly higher? 40,000 feet, 50,000 feet. The limiting factor is the jet engine. Jet engines are essentially air-breathing machines. They operate on the principle, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Air is sucked in, compressed, fuel is added and ignited, then the exhaust blasts out to create thrust. Air is the critical ingredient. Jet engines need oxygen to burn fuel. As altitude increases, the air gets thinner and there are fewer oxygen molecules. Eventually, the engines can't generate enough thrust to maintain speed efficiently. That's why each aircraft has a service ceiling usually around 40 to 45,000 feet for commercial jets. Above that, it's like asking an athlete to sprint at the top of Mount Everest, just not enough oxygen. So 35,000 feet is a masterful compromise, high enough to reduce drag, low enough for engines to breathe efficiently. Modern turbofan engines are marvels of engineering, but even they have limits. Airlines use performance charts to determine the exact altitude where fuel efficiency and engine performance intersect. Concorde, the supersonic jet, cruised around 60,000 feet, but it burned fuel at a rate that made normal operations prohibitive. Another reminder that higher isn't always better. Flying high isn't just about efficiency, it's also about comfort. If you've ever experienced turbulence, you know how much smoother the ride can be when above the worst weather. Most turbulence occurs in the troposphere, the lowest layer of Earth's atmosphere extending from the ground to roughly 30,000 to 40,000 feet. Storm clouds, wind shears, and unstable air masses exist primarily here. By flying at around 35,000 feet, pilots place the plane above most of the chaos. Flying high provides two major benefits. Number one, comfort. Where passengers experience fewer bumps and drops, a smoother ride means less stress, less motion sickness, and a generally more pleasant journey. Pilots may adjust altitude slightly to find the calmest air, technique known as turbulence avoidance. Two, safety. Where thunderstorms, microbursts, and severe turbulence are far more intense below 30,000 feet, 
Modern aircraft can withstand turbulence, but avoidance is always preferable. Flying above storms keeps the aircraft out of harm's way and allows pilots to visualize weather systems from a safe vantage point. During a flight over the Midwest, a plane may fly over cumulonimbus clouds stretching up to 50,000 feet. The pilots adjust to just below the storm tops, often around 35,000 to 36,000 feet, to maintain efficiency and avoid turbulent air pockets. If you want to learn more about how pilots make split-second decisions to keep flight smooth, comment turbulent secrets below. We'll make a video just on that. Thousands of planes are in the air at any given moment. How do they avoid collisions? Enter Air Traffic Control, ATC, and the system of flight levels. Think of the sky as a skyscraper. Each floor is reserved for planes going in a specific direction. Eastbound flights get odd thousands of feet, like 33,000 and 35,000, while westbound get even thousands like 34,000 and 36,000. This simple convention keeps planes safely separated. Add to that the concept of speed separation. Slower aircraft fly lower, Faster jets fly higher. Commercial airliners occupy roughly 30,000 to 40,000 feet, while private planes cruise below 15,000 feet. This creates a high-speed lane system, allowing thousands of planes to operate safely in a dense airspace. Over the Atlantic, crossing flight corridors are carefully stacked 1,000 feet apart. A flight at 35,000 feet might pass directly above another at 34,000, with ATC ensuring no conflicts. Without these altitude rules, collisions would be far more likely. Flying at 35,000 feet means you're in an environment where humans cannot survive without help. Outside the cabin, the air pressure is less than 25% of sea level and temperatures drop to minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The solution? Cabin pressurization. Planes are essentially sealed tubes. Air is taken from the engines, compressed and circulated to maintain a cabin altitude of 6 to 8,000 feet, safe for humans. Your ears pop because your body's adjusting to slight pressure changes. This bubble of life is a triumph of engineering that allows millions of people to traverse the globe safely every day. In 1956, early jetliners had limited pressurization. Flights above 30,000 feet were rare due to hypoxia risk. Modern airliners have transformed travel safety at high altitudes. Thirty-five thousand feet is not universal. It varies by aircraft type, weight, and route. Heavier planes at departure need denser air for lift often cruising around 31,000 to 33,000 feet early on. As fuel burns and weight decreases, pilots perform step climbs, requesting higher altitudes to maintain optimal efficiency. A Boeing 737 might move from 33,000 to 35,000 feet, while an Airbus A380 can step up to 37,000 feet. Private jets often fly even higher, 45,000 to 51,000 feet, taking advantage of their lighter weight and higher climb performance. This ensures maximum fuel efficiency and avoids congested flight levels. Every foot above the ground costs money. Fuel consumption increases dramatically at lower altitudes. Turbulence-related delays cost airlines millions annually, and longer flight times reduce aircraft utilization. By maintaining the sweet spot around 35,000 feet, airlines save fuel, reduce maintenance strain, and increase on-time performance. Delta estimates a 2% fuel savings per flight when optimizing cruising altitude for weight and wind conditions. A single flight saving thousands of dollars. Multiply that across hundreds of daily flights and the savings are astronomical. If you want a video breaking down the cost of flying wrong altitudes, comment fuel secrets below. We'll make it. Early commercial jets like the Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8 couldn't fly as high due to engine limitations. They typically cruised around 25,000 to 30,000 feet. Only with the introduction of high-bypass turbofan engines in the 1970s, 35,000 feet becomes standard. Concorde, with its turbojet engines, flew much higher at 60,000 feet but at a massive fuel cost. Modern subsonic aircraft hit the optimal balance at 35,000 to 37,000 feet. Next time you're seven miles above Earth, looking down at the clouds, know this, 35,000 feet isn't random. It's efficiency, physics, safety, and comfort all rolled into one. It's the altitude where air is thin enough to save fuel, but dense enough for engines to function. It's high enough to avoid turbulence, 
low enough for pressurization systems to keep you alive. This number is the secret of modern aviation, a calculated promise that makes long-distance air travel both practical and safe. If you learned something new about flight today, hit like, share this video with a friend, and subscribe for more deep dives into the science that shapes our world.